Hello and welcome to book club. This is my cozy reading vlog series and in today's episode our book club is going on a bit of a road trip. I have to go to Bath today which is one of my very favourite cities with a very big literary connection because Jane Austen lived there of course, Mary Shelley lived there too, Jane Austen set a lot of her books there but Jane Austen was actually very unhappy when she lived there but I'm not going to be unhappy today. I have to go to Bath um, so I'm going to go book shopping when I am there because it has the very best independent bookshops and I'm also going to get some work done and write to her hopefully. So I thought I would take you along with me. Today is a very beautiful day. I've got very lucky with the weather but it is also a beautiful day for a very different reason. Today, the day I'm filming this, the 30th of July, is Emily Bronte's birthday. This is honestly one of my favourite days of the year. I sort of count down to it like it was my own birthday. I think I enjoy it more than I enjoy my own birthday. I get so excited and happy about this day because this day changed history. The day that Emily Bronte was born <laughs> and it also changed my life because Emily Bronte changed my life and I love it because it reminds me to sit down and think about why I love her so much and what she means to me. I've got a video that I filmed for my Bronte book club series about what Emily and her writing means to me so you can go and watch that a little 18 year old Lucy talking about why she loves Emily Bronte so much. Emily is the writer that I come back to when I need her most. I know that if I'm going through a bit of a tough time or I need to feel my feels and live in my emotions I can just turn to Wuthering Heights or I can turn to her poetry and I know that I've got a friend. When I did my last Welcome to Book Club video, it was Charlotte's birthday and I read a section from Jane Eyre that I'd been thinking about a lot. And I was trying to think of an equivalent that I would share from Emily's work. And I couldn't find one that fit perfectly this year and that would fit perfectly with what I was thinking about Emily's work and something that reflected my own life. So I just wanted to choose something beautiful to read to you instead. So this is from the last page of Wuthering Heights. It's not a spoiler by any means but it's one of my absolute favourite lines from the book and it means a lot to me because in 2017 and 2018 the Bronte Parsonage Museum did a project where they recreated Emily's Wuthering Heights manuscript um, because there is no manuscript of Wuthering Heights that exists. Um, an artist did a project in which uh, line by line every day visitors could write the manuscript out for themselves um, and I got to do this line from the book. It was on the very last day that it was done and I wrote my line out and then somebody else wrote theirs from the museum and then the last line is written by our now Queen, Queen Camilla, who was there on the day. And I have such a lovely memory attached to sitting in Charlotte's husband Arthur Bell Nichols's study in the Bronte Parsonage writing out this line when the museum museum was shut. The first time I'd been in the museum when nobody else was in there, it, there was no visitors, it was just quiet. Like you could imagine that the Brontes were going to walk out of their study and I wrote the line and it's on display sometimes and I look back at the photos, I think about it a lot because it felt like all of us Bronte lovers were a part of something and I loved that as a project. So this is the line. This is the line I've chosen to celebrate Emily Bronte's birthday this year. I lingered round them under that benign sky, watched the moths fluttering among the heath and harebells, listened to the soft wind breathing through the grass, and wondered how anyone could ever imagine unquiet slumbers for the sleepers in that quiet earth. Happy birthday, Emily. If we're talking about what I've read lately, then I really have been in a big poetry mood. Poetry is the thing that I have turned to most lately and it's the thing that I have been living and breathing. I'm not much of a poetry writer, only in my very darkest of times. I've got lots of teenage poetry, but poetry was the thing for a various number of reasons that I really needed lately and I found this greater appreciation for it and visited a lot of poets I hadn't read before or hadn't read in great detail or poets that I thought I loved but when I read them again I realised my love before was quite shallow because it means so much more to me now which is really interesting. I didn't know that I could do that with a book or with writing. I didn't know I thought I could love something but actually 
I ended up liking it so much more intensely that it sort of made that other version of the love I had for it pale in comparison. That was a that was a new one for me. Without going into huge detail and digging up my personal life to share with all of you on the internet, <laughs> I was sort of going through it and then Taylor Swift released the Tortured Poets department and I was feeling like a bit of a tortured poet and I just wanted something that I could escape into without committing to a bigger story. I wanted something that shone a mirror on how I was feeling and poetry was the thing that I found that in. Poetry was my mirror. So I started off reading the selected poets of Alfred Lord Tennyson. I'm a big fan of Victorian poetry. I prefer Victorian poetry to modern poetry and I loved this from the first poem. It's incredible because Alfred Lord Tennyson's work is cyclical. He revisits a lot of stuff that he's done earlier in his career, he rewrites a lot and so you can see different versions of the same poems. So no poem is ever completed with him, every poem is a draft that can be revisited again even if it's been published, which I loved because you get to explore the same themes and the same ideas in his poetry but you see how he is tackling them differently, how his thoughts on the subjects he's dealing with have changed and I just found them so powerful. But because he plays on ideas of Arthurian and medieval legends, you sort of feel like you've got the escape of a fantasy world whilst he's talking about very serious, very emotive topics. One of my favourite poems in here is actually the first one in this collection. It's called Mariana and it's about a woman who stares out her window wondering why her lover will not return, which basically is Alfred Lord Tennyson's ode to being ghosted, right? Like these are very relatable themes. From Alfred Lord Tennyson I then went to Christina Rossetti, who I had read but I never really loved. I think because her most famous poem is Remember. I studied that at school and as sonnets go, it really is not my favourite. I just don't get it as a poem. I think maybe because it is highly memorialised, it just has taken on life of its own. Like in The Bleak Midwinter, it is a thing that's much bigger than Christina Rossetti. It, it, it has a life of its own and it's very popular. It's in popular culture in very specific circumstances. So I'd never really delved into Christina Rossetti and my technique with her poetry wasn't to read it from page to page to go from one cover to the back cover. I just opened it up and started on a poem and what ended up happening was that I would uh, go through, I would like save bits, I've written notes in pencil and all the margins, things that stand out to me I've highlighted. I love sitting with poetry with a pencil and going through and physically reading it. That's my favourite way to read poetry, it's how I pay attention to what's being said. I just analyse it as I'm writing and write down what it makes me feel and I find that in doing that I don't just process the poem but I process things about myself. My favourite one is a poem called Shut Out. I liked this because it reminded me of a Taylor Swift song, I Hate It Here, which actually I went to the Eras tour and she sang that song and I love it so much more now. Another poem I loved from here was one called Twice. It says, I took my heart in my hand, oh my love, oh my love. I said, let me fall or stand, let me live or die, but this once hear me speak, oh my love, oh my love. Yet a woman's words are weak, you should speak, not I. I've written like hearts in the margin and I've underlined it and I just had such a visceral reaction to these poems. I didn't find because I was reading them because I just wanted to read Christina Rossetti. I found them because I'd opened a page and they spoke to me instantly these lines sort of jumped off the page and they were like here you go this is what you need and it meant so much more to do it like that it, it meant so much to have a relationship with these poems and I really appreciated that and I just thought it was so lovely and then the other poet I have been reading a lot of lately which is not a surprise to me is Sylvia Plath I always loved Sylvia Plath. The Bell Jar meant so much to me as a teenager. It's one of my favourite books. I included it very heavily in my book, The Paper and Heart Society. It's my main character Tabby's favourite book. And I always thought I liked Sylvia Plath and now I've just read her again. I've reread a lot of her poetry and I'm like, I can't have loved Sylvia Plath because I've never loved her as much as I love her now in this moment at this time in my life. Like now is when she feels 
at her most powerful to me. And so I read The Colossus and I also read Ariel and I revisited a lot of my favourites. One of my favourite Sylvia Plath poems has always been Lazarus. It's probably my favourite stanza from any poem. The final stanza is, Out of the ash I rise with my red hair and I eat men like air. This time I related a lot more to The Colossus. I had never really paid a lot of attention to it. Ariel had always been the collection for me. But I loved this one poem called The Eye Moat, in which at the end she says, What I want back is what I was, before the bed, before the knife, before the brooch pin and the salve, fixed to me in this parenthesis. Horses fluent in the wind, a place, a time gone out of mind. And I became quite fixated, quite obsessed with this idea of living between the parenthesis, between the brackets, and what that would mean. You have the before and the after, but you're living in this space in between where you're sort of out of time. I loved that and I think sometimes you can read a poem and you don't have to love the whole thing, you can just find a stanza that speaks to you and it can take on a, a life and a meaning of its own, that's what poetry is about. I also loved a poem called Spinster, that was another absolute favourite, I've got a heart next to, to that one as well. I loved revisiting Sylvia Plath and I'd like to reread The Bell Jar actually, I've got a lot of her diaries, her journals to read too and some letters, I've got a really big collection, like the first volume which is like this big <laughs> of her letters so I'd like to revisit some of her more personal writings the things that were never sort of meant to be read. I would love your poetry recommendations by the way I would love that so much. I love Victorian poetry so if you've got any other Victorian poets I should read I am gonna read some Wordsworth um <laughs> mainly because I just got two guinea pigs and I called them Wordsworth and Coleridge so I feel like I've got to read some Wordsworth and Coleridge <laughs> um, but I've been reading the diaries of Dorothy Wordsworth, William Wordsworth's sister as well so I'll talk about them a bit more later um but I've just been loving finding all this stuff that feels very creative that isn't related to like my writing or my creativity but is inspiring me to think differently and is inspiring me to just feel the feels <laughs> process everything, to feel it, to sort of allow yourself to feel because I think that's what poetry is. Poetry is a feeling, it's an emotion, it's like capturing a moment and a feeling and and something that you know desperately has to be said. That For me that's what the magic of poetry is. Poetry is something that sheds a light on your soul and sort of allows you to explore different sides of yourself and your being and your experiences. I'm loving it and I'm just loving finding something that really speaks to me. Let me know what you've been reading lately and if you have a favourite poem from any of the poets that I've spoken about. I'm gonna get ready now to head off. I'm gonna fill my pride and purge this tote bag with all my stuff. Look at that. I just love grumpy cat Mr Darcy. Like I, I have to take this everywhere with me. So I'm gonna take my laptop. I've got my notebook. I've got like work that I want to get done. Just I've got a lot of really exciting stuff happening in the moment but a lot of like stressful stuff because everything's very exciting. I've got like serious work to do um, in terms of like my writing and everything else like stuff is happening. I can't talk about any of it but stuff is happening and it's really exciting but also I've got a book that I desperately need to edit and I have to sort of like work out a big big edit solution which is exciting because it means I get the chance now to make the book even better before people get to read it but yeah that's my plan for today book shopping and then gonna do some writing some like planning writing and then like some some sort of like samples of different things like different ideas I want to do which would be really quite cool and I'll take you along with me it's a really lovely lovely day so I do feel very lucky in that
do a little book haul and I can show you what I got. I love it when you go into a bookshop and you might have a list of books you want in your head but you find something on a table or tucked away on a shelf that you weren't expecting to catch your eye or you didn't know anything about and then you read the back and you're like I absolutely have to read this book and I need to read it now. This has to come home with me which was very much that kind of bookshop exploring day. So I was walking through the classic section in Waterstones Bath which they've upgraded at some point recently and it's just so incredible there are so many classics like a whole huge section and I love it and I really need to explore it in more depth but on the table in the middle of the section sitting on the table was this The Haunted Hotel by Wilkie Collins. I am not the biggest Wilkie Collins fan. I have read The Woman in White and I loved it but I just found it very long. I found for what it was it went on for too long. I read it quite a few years ago now and I like it. It's an absolute iconic book, a foundational piece of sensation literature which is all about mystery and intrigue and brings in gothic and um, detective, like very early detective work. I loved it but it's not my favourite. I much prefer Mary Elizabeth Braddon. Like in a fight between Wilkie Collins and Mary Elizabeth Braddon, Mary Elizabeth Braddon is winning. Um, but I saw this, The Haunted Hotel, and I was intrigued by the cover first of all in this vintage edition. I just, it caught my eye and then I picked it up and read the back and I was like, yeah, I need to read it. So this is about an eminent doctor who is visited by a desperate woman with a question. Am I evil or insane? When an Italian servant stops sending letters to his wife in London, she is convinced he has been murdered. And in the darkened bedroom of a mouldering palazzo by the Grand Canal, an English lord sickens and suddenly dies. How are these mysteries connected? Spend the night in room 14 of Venice's finest hotel and find out the truth if if you dare. So this collection includes The Haunted Hotel and also the short story The Dream Woman. And I saw it and I knew I was in trouble and I knew I wouldn't be leaving the shop without taking it home with me. And I would really like to read it soon. I read it and I was like, that is exactly what I need in my life to get me back into reading classics because I haven't been reading a lot of them lately. And I was like, yes, I'm going to buy that and I'm going to read it soon. I might start it next actually because it just sounds like the exact thing I am in the mood for and I'm also very excited to read another Wilkie Collins to have something to compare his writing to. It's very difficult when you've read one book by an author. I don't feel like I fully clicked with The Woman in White by Wilkie Collins. I feel like I liked it, I could see exactly what it was doing, I see why it's such an important piece of literature but I didn't have that heartfelt connection to it like I do with some other Victorian authors but I'd like to read another piece of his writing just to see was it that book or is it just how I feel about his books in general and I feel like it might have just been that book. I feel like I could really get into his writing if I try and I explore around a little bit. So I'm so excited to read The Haunted Hotel. I'm gonna read it soon so keep an eye out for my next book club video. And then the other book that I bought was Last Seen Online by Lauren James and I have to say that Wren is a very good friend of mine and actually sent me a digital copy of this book but I haven't read it yet because I really wanted to to read the physical copy because I just knew how beautiful it would be but one of Wren's absolute amazing strengths and standouts as a writer is their use of multimedia aspects, creative formatting and original ways of telling the story beyond simple prose and so I knew that for this book in particular I needed this and I need it for my bookshelves too because I just love Wren's books. I've always been obsessed with them ever since their first book The Next Together which I think if you go back on my channel you might find a video of us talking about when we were just babies. It's been a long time, we've been friends for a long time and I'm such a fan of their writing and just a big fangirl 
for any of their books, which is a lovely coincidence because Last Seen Online is a book about fandom. And the really great thing about this book is that Ren has adapted their own online story, an unauthorised fan treatise, which you may have read. It was a website telling this big sort of mystery story about fandom and this is the adaptation of that but you don't need to know anything about that story to read and love and understand this one. The tagline of Last Seen Online is fandom can be fatal and it's about Delilah who digs in to this decades old fandom scandal and she stumbles across this mysterious blog written by somebody called Gotti Writes and it's about this dangerous world of fandom and conspiracy theories and murder that she finds herself involved in. I'm so excited to read this because reading any of Ren's books reminds me of being a teenager again. They take me right back to the books that I needed the most when I was a teen, when I wanted like a good escape, when I would stay up until 3am reading the latest of their releases. Like I, it, this is an event for me. This is a really, really big deal. Any new book from Ren is just the best. So I can't wait. I'll be talking about it lots once I've read it, which again will be very soon. I'm so happy and delighted and all the words for being excited for this book. The other thing I want to talk to you about is a book that I finished reading the other day. I didn't vlog it because it's been so hot in the UK that I've basically just been melting and I can't think straight. All I could really do was read. So I finished reading Not In Love by Ali Hazelwood. It's her latest release and again Ali Hazelwood Hazelwood's books are like an event for me now. I read them as soon as they come out, like I look forward to them. I just always like to have an Ali Hazelwood book to look forward to or one that I am reading. And Not In Love was spoken about as a very different book for her, sort of a bit more hard hitting and dealing with bigger issues. I'm not sure if I agree with that. I, I didn't read it thinking that it was really any think wildly different to what she'd already written. I can see why the conversation has been around that, but I enjoyed it all the same. It is spicier, I will say, than say the love hypothesis. It's a, a bit of a turn in that sense. I'm not complaining. I actually really liked that. And I liked the connection between the two characters. Ali Hazelwood writes what she calls steminist novels, which is about women in STEM in science. And our main character in Not In Love, Rue, is a scientist who's working on a patent for microbial protection to keep food lasting longer. She's worked for this company for a long time. She's very closely aligned with the big boss of the company who set the company up. But at the beginning of the novel, we find out that the company she works for is in trouble and our love interest, Eli, comes in as part of a group who is looking for everything that is wrong with Klein, the company that Rue works for, in order to take over. But, <laughs> Eli and Rue have already met on a dating app, sort of like a hookup app, and so they have history, they are very attracted to each other, and they're like, well, if we sleep together once we'll get it out of our systems. Yeah, that never works in romance. And so you can imagine what happens when these two characters who are extremely attracted to each other, but are on opposing teams, try to work out how they're gonna make that work. I don't want to commit and say that this is my favourite Ali Hazelwood book that I have read because I feel like you'd be sick of me when I say that for her next release because I just love being in the world that she creates. Every book I read becomes my favourite but I just love them all and I feel like people will talk a lot with Ali Hazelwood's book in particular because she's so popular, because she's so widely regarded in, in the romance field. People treat books like that with disdain, especially within the wider reading community. They look down on romance and they look down at, I think, the power that romance books can have. And I love romance. Like, I'm an unashamed romance reader. Romance isn't a guilty pleasure for me. It's just a pleasure. And so reading like an Ali Hazelwood book that sort of encompasses everything I love about romance makes me want to read more of the genre. It makes me want to talk about it more. It inspires my own writing. I just think that for me it's a perfect escape. It's something that I don't have to think about too much as I'm reading and yet it reminds me of why I deserve love and what love means and 
and it's not just about romantic love but about friendship and I just think the power of human connection and that's why I read romance. I read romance to feel understood and Ali Hazelwood's characters are all very autistic coded so for uh, an autistic reader who feels socially awkward sometimes or feels out of place a character like Rue means a lot to me and her voice in particular in Not In Love was so loud and so strong and I felt this real connection with her like she was my autistic sister even though that wasn't acknowledged on the page. I was totally head over heels in love with Not In Love. The only downside of it is now that I'm caught up with Ali Hazelwood I'm like I've got to wait until next year for a new one of her books and I don't know how I'm gonna do that. I am I probably will reread some of hers. Like I adore her writing and I loved this book and it just was everything that I needed and wanted and it, it was just everything. I loved it. Would highly recommend. If you love romance and you haven't read Ali Hazelwood, like what are you doing? you need to get on her books. If you've made it this far through this video I would love to know what you would like to see more of in these reading vlogs. I'm enjoying making them so much I'm hoping to make many more for you in the coming weeks. I'm like really back on it now and I just love sitting down and talking to you. It really does feel like we're all gathered around a little circle talking about the books that we love and I was so grateful for all your comments and all your feedback back on my first welcome to book club video it meant so much at a time when I really 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 needed it and I love you all and I would like to thank you for sticking with me because I think sometimes I've been doing this for so long I do wonder like why <laughs> what have I still got to say and then I sit down and I talk to you and I realize I have so much I want to share with you and so much so much exciting stuff ahead <laughs> I yeah we've got a lot to look forward to in the next year and I would just love your input if there's anything else you'd like to see. I'm gonna do a QA and a soon so that will be coming up in an upcoming video. I've got a trip planned next month that I know you will all be very very excited about because I'm excited about it. There are lots of amazing bookish things ahead. Thank you so much for watching this video. Book club session is dismissed. Happy reading!